Hello, it's Telephone Tuesdays again, and uh, today I'm working on some of these things. So it's two motion selectors for a project coming up for the museum with Lockmon Mode Computer. We've been talking about it for a little while. Uh, you're going to like it, it's going to be really cool. Uh, but actually, it's quite a big one, and uh, I think, if I remember rightly, we're going to need about 60 of uh, these things. Uh, so, I need to get them working. And uh, well, I've put one in the test stand here. Uh, so let's have a look. I've never looked at this one before. We've got a load of relays, different types of relays with different types of uh, switch contacts in there. You see these there? Uh, uh, some of them protected under these little plastic covers. Um, we've got a higher speed uh, relay in there, some resistors at the top. And then we get down to the uh, all of the mechanical moving bits down here. There's some uh, ratchets, and you see these toothed bits here, this is the vertical ratchet, and just in there, you see around here, that's the rotary ratchet, and that's what uh, moves this uh, carriage up and down the shaft here, and around. That's where you get a uh, two motion selector from, because it goes up and across. And when this is plugged in properly to the exchange or whatever kind of machine that it's in, um, it has a bank of contacts around the back. So it's like an X, Y coordinate. You can go up and then across. With the design of these things, there's always a compromise between the cost, the size of it, and the reliability as well, and the speed at which you can uh, repair it. Because you don't want the telephone uh, systems offline. Um, and uh, if you look down here, we can see the actual electrical contacts uh, here. Uh, you've got two there, two there. So you've got four. These normally uh, contact the uh, arc of... Uh, of bank contacts that sit behind here and you've got a uh, hundred possible positions x and y across actually a little bit more than that because you've got an 11th position on on the rotary um so uh, if you're trying to give make that functionality with something like a uniselector like one of these things that moves in a moves in an arc um in one direction um well, okay, so there's, uh, there's 25 contacts around the arc, so you could uh, offset the wipers, a bit like we've got here, um, so that uh, you're getting 25 in a uh, semicircle, and then 50 overall, so a full circle round is uh, 50 possible contacts. Well, you're still not getting 100, are you? So you need to make the diameter of this unit selector bigger, um, okay, and... Uh, then you need um, to make uh, four sets of those uh, bank contacts. Uh, if you wanted to do it just with one wiper going around, uh, this would have to be huge, wouldn't it? And uh, 100, 100 contacts all the way around. Um, and then you're adding into the equation the fact that all the way up here, all these relays and stuff do um, different switching to supply different tones and stuff, so you've got to add relays to it and uh, and so having a purpose-built switch like this that comes pre-wired from the factory you plug it in and if it breaks you can plug it out and replace it quickly and then take it to a test stand like one of these and repair it um, actually is quite quite a good idea um, and the, uh, the size of it is not so ridiculous actually uh, I'm, as I was saying, I have never uh, plugged this one in before, so <laughs> it's a big mystery as to what it's going to do. I've plugged in a, uh, a Butinsky here uh, that we've talked about in previous episodes, so we can test it as if we're uh, dialing from a home phone. Uh, and I'm going to turn on the power on this little switch up here. Can you see that? There's a switch on the test stand here that connects the power to it. Uh, and then... Uh, we're going to see if it starts glitching out or if it's okay. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, it's going to be all right. Okay, so the power's on. So then if I press this red button on the side of Batinsky, connects to the line. Oh, we're not getting nothing. Okay. Oh, do you know what? Actually, it's working. How about that? So this was doing pretty good. This has not seen any action since it was decommissioned, which is like in the... I don't know, was it 70s, 80s? Something like that? Uh, yeah. These things are reliable. Not bad at all. Um, but the problem that I've been having uh, with most of them 
is that uh, they are fairly old, and so uh, they've got a load of old oil in it that has uh, gone all gloopy and has uh, seized up all of these mechanisms here. Um, it's not been really any need for adjusting uh, things in here. You see there's loads, loads of uh, different screws and things to do adjustments with. Um, they were all working fine at some point, but uh, they just uh, just need a bit of a clean. They need a bit of a clean. So if I plug in another one, jack in another one, uh, let's see what that one's doing. I'm halfway through unjamming this one. I need to screw this test stand down to my desk. Uh, come on. There we are. Jack this one in. You can see here at the back there are the uh, U-points where the actual selector switch uh, jacks into the electrical connection points. You can see all of these points, they just go down into these uh, points that are shaped like the letter U is why you call them U-points. And uh, those are all broken out from cables to these points here so you can connect whatever you want to uh, into them. For these particular type of uh, two motion group selectors, um, and there are loads of different types by the way, nothing's ever simple is it? Um, you want to tie together uh, U-points 11 and 15 and uh, normally you can tell the different types because there's normally a little note just around about here. We don't actually have one on this one which uh, increased the mystery um, just for fun. But let me put it back in here and then jack this one in and we'll see what this is doing now. Let's have a little look, see. Okay, down in there. Oh yeah, I should have turned the power off. Uh, let's put the Batinsky in. So dial in zero, so it's gonna step up 10 positions. Oh, it's it was nearly there, nearly there. Uh, it's sounding a bit dodgy. There you go, and it's releasing well. Uh, let's try that again. Oh yeah, do you see that? Not uh, pulling it up as it should on each pulse that's coming from, coming from the dial. So the reason why this particular one is doing that is because the uh, vertical pull here is jammed up with old oil and so every time that uh, it engages there we go so you can see down here there we are <laughs> sorry bear with me uh, down here we have the vertical ratchet here these little toothy bits right and up there that is the pool, right? And as that gets lifted up by the vertical magnet over here, you see this plate here of metal that gets attracted up by this electromagnet and it moves all of this up. That pool is tucked under one of the ratchet tooth teeth, pulls it up, then goes back down uh, and hooks under the next one but because the uh, gummed up oil is in there it's not returning back in and hooking under quick enough for it to pull up uh, the next pull it, to pull it up at the interval of the pulses that are sent by this dial yeah <laughs> does that make sense and after that pull there has moved uh, the shaft up, there's another one here that locks it in. Locks it in, so it can't move back down. You see, as uh, it goes up, clicks in there, and it pivots here. And these things have got to move really fast, so you've got to make sure that they're all springing back good. You can adjust the tension of these springs, but this normally just needs some decent oiling. And we're having similar problems with the uh, rotary one here. Uh, it's particular, in particular, uh, this 
uh, pivot point here is getting gummed up. So similar thing, uh, you've got the rotary magnet back there and that pushes this round. This has to be up for it to be able to go off normal, that's called, when it's uh, up off of the, the bottom position. Um, uh, you see it here, the pool moving across. Having real trouble with this autofocus. Um, and it goes around and then springs back and then not only springs back this way but also moves in this way and engages with the next tooth but uh, so it's this pivot point that gets uh, gets gummed up and uh, there's there's a couple of ways to solve that um, <laughs> you may have seen on uh, on on my channel I did a video uh, with a, a little tip that I, I picked up that's uh, not not advised um, but uh, what you can do is if you want to you can uh, just simply uh, burn <laughs> off the uh, the old oil uh, with a blowtorch but uh, <laughs> it's probably not advisable uh, oil tends to be a little bit flammable and uh, yeah it can get out of control uh, and you don't want to damage these damage these lovely things so I'm doing it the hard way uh, I am uh, working the uh, you can't dismantle these bits is the point um, and so I'm having to work the mechanism back and forth while spraying some new oil in there to flush out the old stuff I, I am I admit I'm using WD-40 I know some people will have a problem with that but um, this you need a lot you need a lot of the uh, oil to uh, flush this stuff out and this is you know relatively cheap and it works really well and it's good for preserving things because it's designed for water dispersal designed for things not to rust and stuff and uh, we will then put some you know better oil on it if you've got um, suggestions for specific oils to use and stuff because this is the stuff that gets lost in in the knowledge um, it, the assumed knowledge of uh, engineers who used to work with this stuff every day um, and you know uh, you just assume oh yeah it's the number two oil whatever um, but it's uh, not so simple now to kind of figure that stuff out that didn't really get written down the, this really really simple stuff like oiling doesn't really get written down because that's just passed on by word of mouth and you know it's assumed knowledge so um, yeah that's that's the little bits of skills that um, we're trying to trying to pick up from people so if you have some specific advice please leave it in the comments for us I've also got something that I think is a like penetrating fluid but uh, <laughs> I mean it's uh, pretty cheapo so uh, yeah, but uh, you know the shops are closed. I'm doing this in the evening, so we've got to make do with what we got. This is the adapter number four. Uh, it's really perfect for this job. Uh, I've obviously thought about this quite a lot. You can leave it here and uh, position this wherever you want. Uh, I'll try to do this with one hand, and uh, you can swivel it around. It's great. So here's an example of one that's not working. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, you can tell uh, it's not meant to be making that noise. Oh dear, uh, yeah. So uh, the problem with it is uh, this bit here, too much gunk. And uh, if I move it out, watch it return very slowly, turns back in. That's pulled by, uh, by this uh, spring here, which is acting against this bit, which pivots here moves it back in and uh, if I move up the carriage here you can see uh, where it engages the end of the pool there uh, engages with the uh, with the ratchet uh, if I move this manually oh it's not actually going across why is that hmm okay it's got another problem okay but yeah so it engages with it there uh, and then if it's not moving back in quick enough, it's not moving in to engage with the next tooth of the ratchet. And so you just get noise like this. Here's an example of a uh, stuck vertical pull. Uh, it's this bit here that I'm touching with my finger. It pivots 
up here, and this is the spring here that should return it, swivel it back in towards the next ratchet tooth here. But you can see here, I can move it in, move it out, and it stays exactly where I put it. And it should be springing back, but it's completely seized up. Oh dear. That's going to take a lot of work to free that. And you see, yeah, I can't really take this apart uh, to uh, clean it all and stuff. In that case, probably easier to uh, disassemble this entire um, assembly here, take it out so I've got more space to uh, play with this. Yeah, and if I try to uh, dial a number, oh dear, not very healthy. Yeah, you see the magnet's doing its thing, it's trying, but it's not catching the pull, not catching the ratchet at all. What you might say is, Mitch, you can undo this with a spanner like this, and you can take that little spring off and bend it so you've got a bit more tension, so it'll force it go to go back in a bit more. But the trouble is with that, right, is that uh, on the reverse action, when the little tooth of the pull is sliding down these faces here, it's got too much, uh, too much tension, too much pushing it in this way. So you go up and it doesn't completely slide down and slot back into the next position. Uh, you see there, you see, it went up with it. It should have gone down and in. Uh, yeah, but it was pushing too much against this. That's bad. I'm gonna carry on now and do, you know, 50 more of these. Uh, it takes a little a bit of time working, working that mechanism back and forth. That blowtorch is looking uh, very tempting, but I am gonna resist. Um, let's uh, give you some more lovely shots of these lovely two motion selectors in action. Oh, yeah, that was uh, not necessarily the, a mechanical problem because uh, you have um, different relay contacts as well that are responsible for um, the, uh, the automatic um, rotary motion. And uh, I have noticed on a couple of these, just you need a bit of a spray of a contact cleaner um, to just to clean those up um, because the resistance is too high and they're, uh, they're not properly engaging uh, the magnet and stuff in the right timings and things. Um, and th when they're adjusted correctly, these um, these relay spring contacts, uh, they're actually kind of self-cleaning. They like rub against each other. Um, so just a little bit of contact cleaner in there, work it a few times. And normally, uh, it solves it pretty quick actually. Yeah, so. Yep, I've got a bit more work to do on this one. I'll see you in another. Oh, <laughs> see you next Tuesday. <laughs>